Greetings everyone, in this video I'm going to show a real-world malicious document leveraging VBA, WMI, and PowerShell to form a complete attacker toolkit culminating in a download and in-memory execution of a malicious PowerShell object. Before I get started, I want to show you in my analysis system here that I have execution policy set to restricted, which means that no script should work. And the reason I demonstrate this is just to show that execution policy is really not a particularly useful security measure as it is trivially bypassed. Okay, so let me look at the actual document. So this document is taken from real-world malware where I simply replace the macro with a more innocuous version for easier demonstration purposes. And as you can see, the purpose of this document is to use certain psychological tricks to get users to subvert their own security. And the way it does this is by saying something like, this document has been set to blur due to security reason, typo, and for your safety. Kindly click option enable content above to view proper document, typo again. And as you can see, the document is in fact blurred, thus encouraging users to click this enable content button, which really looks very annoying in this yellow bar here. Now, this may seem like an obvious ruse to us, but bear in mind that users are stupid. It's literally why we have jobs, so don't be too hard on them. In order for a user to even be seeing this document, they must already have believed that the spear phishing email in which this document arrived is legitimate. So what's one more click? So of course they'll do this. Anyway, let's take a look at the actual macros by going to view macros, view macros, and then just edit here. Okay, so there's a couple things here that I want to talk about. I'm going to talk about them out of order. The first thing I want to talk about here is, is method one. So method one uses this line to access the root of the WMI namespace and then this line to access WMI's ability to interact with Windows processes. And then this line here to create an arbitrary process. And the process that I'm creating is PowerShell, no exit just for the sake of demonstration purposes, IEX for invoke expression, and then new object.net.webclient.download string, which will download essentially an arbitrary URL and execute it in memory. <clears throat> so here I'm downloading this URL shortened URL, which points to my malicious PowerShell script. Method 2 does the exact same thing, but in a different way. These first two lines are the same. This third line here invokes the Win32 API function URL download to file A. It downloads the exact same string, but saves it as a file in the user's public folder. And then this line here again uses WMI to create a process, again invoking PowerShell. And then here I have this execution policy bypass, which is a one-off modification of the system's execution policy to enable me to execute my script. Now, in order to be able to execute this Win32 API call, I first have to declare it here, which is why this declaration is here. And the purpose of this really is just to show how powerful VBA is, that it can invoke arbitrary Win32 API calls, doing things a lot more dangerous than this trivial file download here. In fact, this is actually the worst way to do this. Method 1 is the superior method for two reasons. A, it doesn't require the direct invocation of 32 API calls. And B, this execution is done purely in memory, whereas this method saves my PowerShell script to disk thus allowing AV to get its hands on it. So again, just for demonstration purposes of, as to what VBA can do. Okay, so without further ado, let me close this and then enable content to show you my macro. And as you can see, it's pretty simple here. It just says, thou hast been PowerPwned, lulz. So in this case, a purely innocuous PowerShell script, but this could just as easily be a PowerShell Empire backdoor or running invoke Mimi cats to harvest user credentials. And if I didn't have the no exit thing there, this window would be practically invisible to users. Okay, so let me close this now and close this and run this again. And you will see that because I have macros enabled, this script ran automatically. And again, without the no exit thing here, the users wouldn't even see this. And the reason it ran automatically is because I have this sub here called auto open. Auto open is not an arbitrary function name. It is in fact a hard coded name in Microsoft Word that means this function works whenever the document is initially opened. A function in order to do this must be called auto open. Attackers cannot obfuscate this. So looking for a function called auto open is a very good detection mechanism for malicious macro documents because there is no legitimate reason that a document should have to invoke macros when it starts up. 
Now, just for funsies, let me comment out this and use method two and save this and save this and close it and then run it again just to show you that method two works as well. Despite the fact I had execution policy set to restricted, this script still ran. Okay, there's one more thing I want to show you, and that is in Process Explorer. If I go down here and I look at Microsoft Word, you will notice that Microsoft Word, despite the fact that it invoked VBA to invoke PowerShell, has no child processes. Now, one thing I'll show you before I show you the actual process is that you can see by looking at the DLLs that Microsoft that WinWord has VBE7.dll loaded, which is a clear indication that this is a macro document, apart from, of course, the fact that it's docm and it tells you to enable content, but this is just one more way to, to, to see it. The actual PowerShell process is here, and the parent process is WMIPRVSE, whose parent process is services, service host, services when in it. So the, and this process is the WMI provider service. Notice that it is completely decoupled from Microsoft Word. So if you're using some sort of HIPS policy or process tree analysis to look for child processes spawned by Microsoft Word, say to invoke PowerShell, this doesn't do it that way. It's a completely separate parent process, thus bypassing that kind of behavioral detection mechanism. So there you go. That is how a real-world malicious document can leverage VBA, WMI, and PowerShell to form a complete attacker toolkit. Thanks for watching.